My cousin has a great dilemma. Her daughter dropped her phone, making it almost unusable. Now we could upgrade to the iPhone XR, but instead let's see if we can fix her old phone and save her $700. Let's go. Let's take a quick look over the phone. Right off, we definitely will need to replace the screen as it's not salvageable. There's no puncture marks in the back and the frame doesn't seem to be bent. There doesn't appear to be any damage to the charging port either. Around the thumbprint reader, it looks bad, so hopefully we can save that. Now this is the best iPhone screen kit I've found on Amazon. You don't have time for space bars when you're making great screens. Also, this one seemed to have a great warranty. We are always stand by our products. Now one thing you want to make sure to check for is that you're getting the right screen for the right phone. On the iPhone 6S, if you flip it over, it will give you the model number. So on this one, it's A1688. Now let's take a look at the kit. Inside are three screwdrivers, including this specialized star screwdriver. There's a SIM popper, a suction cup, a guitar pick spudger, and two separate pry tools. Now looking at the screen itself, I found that this has a magnet, which can be very useful when placing tiny screws. It also includes a protective screen cover. The screen itself seems to be very high quality, it includes a protective plate and the camera speaker set. The connection pins and cable are also good quality. Last, we have some screen cleaners. All right, let's get everything set up to put the new screen on. First thing you want to do is power off the phone, then eject the SIM card with a pin ejector. Once that is out, you can take out the screws on the bottom charging port. You'll need to use the star-headed screwdriver. These screws and some glue are the only thing holding the screen down. That included magnet kit is very handy, so make sure to use that to not lose the screws. Once those are out, use your pry tool to go around the outside edge and separate the screen from the frame. Sometimes the screens are so badly damaged that they'll come separate from the screen holder itself, so be careful you don't get cut by the glass. It also is a good idea to use like a hair dryer or a heat gun to heat up the glue so it separates more easily. Continue working your way around the sides until you're able to pull apart the screen. You can see that there's some black glue still holding it down. If the phone was heated, it comes apart more easily. Once inside, there's four screws that hold down a metal plate. We're going to need to remove the four screws that are holding it down. Once removed, carefully take off the plate and set it aside. Next, use a pry tool to carefully pull out the pin connectors. There's only going to be three of them. Be careful not to damage the pins or pull too hard and rip the cables. Carefully lift the screen out. Now this is a close-up shot of the cables and the pin connectors. Remove any excess glue that may be stuck on the phone. Next, we need to take off this plate that's covering the thumbprint reader. There are three screws that are holding it down. Take those out and remove the plate. Even though the replacement screen includes a home button, you need to take off the old one from the broken phone and replace it on the new one. As a safety measure, the thumbprint reader won't work unless it's specifically attached to the original phone. Looking closer, we need to remove this sensor. This is the brains of the thumbprint reader. Once it is detached, push the thumbprint reader through the front of the screen and gently pull it off. Now there's going to be lots of pieces of broken glass. Be careful not to cut yourself as you pull it off the glue. I found a good technique to pull it off was to rub my finger along the side, be thorough in removing all the glass from the glue, and then you're ready to put it onto the new screen. When you place it on, make sure to line it up with this little notch here so that it holds it in place. Then carefully use a pry tool to seal the glue around it. If it's been wet or too badly damaged, you may have to use a double-sided tape to stick it down. All right, now we need to put on the plate. Make sure to slide it underneath that metal loop. Then seal it back down with the three screws. Thumbprint reader feels good, so we can now put the new screen on the old phone. Make sure to line up the pins, gently push them down, and put on the metal plate. And again, seal it with the four screws that we took out earlier. Make sure to remove any plastic that may be underneath the new screen. Snap it shut, put back in the charging port screws, and replace the SIM card. Once that's done, let's power it on and see if it works. All right, looks like the touch sensor is working just great. Let's turn it off and put on the screen protector. Start in the corner and remove the protective film from the new screen. Slowly peel the plastic so it doesn't flick up dust. Then turn that side away from the direction you're moving so it doesn't collect dust and align it with the headpiece. Clean it off and check for any air bubbles. Looks good, so let's turn it back on and check for any errors. 
If there was a problem, you would get an error message that says cannot recognize Touch ID. In that case, you would have to replace the thumbprint reader. It's amazing what we are able to do by fixing this phone. Only a few minutes of time can save a lot of money. Hopefully my niece will stop throwing phones around. In the meantime, I'm glad we could help someone out. Thanks for watching.